It's time for Fresh Oil with singer-songwriter and pastor Keith Manley, a program designed to minister the gospel of God's grace and to bring fresh oil to the brokenhearted. And now, with today's program, Pastor Keith Manley. Hello, neighbor. Welcome to Fresh Oil. I'm Keith Manley. And, you know, a couple of weeks back, I did a teaching on the seven feasts of Israel. There are seven holidays that the Jews celebrate. And these holidays would all give them a picture of Messiah who would come. Uh, The first three feasts were the spring feasts. Those gave a picture of Jesus' first coming. And he would fulfill them exactly to the day. The Feast of Pentecost was fulfilled on that day when the Holy Spirit came and the church was born. And then the three final feasts take place in the fall of the year, and they represent the second coming of Jesus when he comes back, and I believe that's soon and very soon. But there are three feasts that were mandatory that all the Jews had to come to Jerusalem. And Jesus was a religious Jew. He would have to keep these feasts and and do everything. And so three times a year, Jesus would have to go from wherever he was, his home in Nazareth, or when he was traveling with his disciples, they would come to Jerusalem to celebrate these three feasts. The first one was Passover. They would always have to celebrate Passover and come to Jerusalem. The second one would be the Feast of Pentecost. And the third one would be the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, there's an interesting story in the Bible that takes place as Jesus comes to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. The story is found in John, the seventh chapter. And in verse 37, it says this, on the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. You know, of all the seven feasts of Israel and the three mandatory feasts where they had to come to Jerusalem, the most joyous of all was this feast that Jesus was celebrating, and that is the Feast of Tabernacles. And the reason is because that feast was symbolic of how God brought the Jews through the wilderness, and he he took care of them for those 40 years that they were wandering in the wilderness, and he fed them with manna. And it's a joyous celebration and and uh, uh, there's a ceremony that's involved in this though and it's it's not found in the bible it's actually found in 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 jewish tradition and uh, recently they they found the pool of siloam when we were on a trip there just a couple of years back and uh, they discovered and unearthed some uh, archaeological digs and it was there was an amazing thing that happened at the feast of tabernacles according to the mishnah Water ceremonies were an important part of this celebration. So when Jesus speaks here of the living waters that's going to flow, it would remind them because a priest would draw water from the Pool of Siloam from a golden pitcher, and he would carry it back to the temple and pour it into this bowl next to the altar, a silver bowl. And there would be musicians and choirs, and there were some of the psalms that people would sing each year. And as the priest poured out the water, he would pray for the Lord to send rain upon the land. And and this water-drawing ceremony was all a symbol of the Holy Spirit who would come. And so all of a sudden, here is Jesus, and he speaks and uh, to the crowd there that day. And the Bible says he, he said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture said, streams of living water will flow from within him. Let me ask you something today, friend. Do you have a spiritual thirst for God today? See, Jesus said in Matthew 5, he said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. To gain spiritual thirst, we have to come to Jesus. And and if we want to experience the presence of God, it's only found through the person of Jesus Christ. You can't drink from the polluted waters of sin And expect to have your thirst quenched because it's only found in Jesus Christ, my friend. David, in Psalm chapter 42, it's one of my favorite psalms. He said this, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for, for the living God. See, we've got to cry out like David did. God, you're my God. He said in Psalm 63, earnestly I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my body longs for you in a dry and weary land 
where there is no water. See, Jesus was showing the picture that day of, of, of the living water when he said to them, any man comes to me and he thirst, I will quench his thirst. I'll give him streams of, of living water. But we have to come to that point where we cry out to him, where we're hungry and thirsty for God. Psalm 143 verse 6 says, I spread out my hands to you. My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Friend, you can never have a close relationship with God unless you thirst for him, unless you desire to be in his presence. Listen to Solomon's wisdom in Ecclesiastes chapter 2. He said this, he says, I thought in my heart, come now, I will test you with pleasure to find out what is good. But that also proved to be meaningless. Laughter, I said, is foolish. And what does pleasure accomplish? Wow. So the first thing Solomon tried was he tried the wildlife, and it didn't satisfy him. And then verse 3, he speaks of trying the wine. He says, I tried cheering myself with wine and the embracing folly. My, my mind still guided me with wisdom. I wanted to see what was worthwhile for men to do under heaven during the few days of their lives. You know what? He found out, like the alcoholic finds out, wine doesn't work. Wine doesn't quench the thirst. And then he tried wealth. He said in verse 7, I bought male and female slaves and had other slaves who were born in my house. I owned more herds and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me. I amassed silver and gold for myself and the treasures of kings and provinces. I acquired men and women, singers, and a harem as well, with delights of the heart of man. But he found out, as the Bible says, the eyes of man are never satisfied. Friend, all the wealth of the world can't quench the hunger for God and the thirst for God. And then he tried women. He said in verse 10, I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my work, and this was the reward for all my labor. See, he had 700 wives and 300 concubines, and with all that, he still wasn't satisfied. And finally, he tried wisdom. He said, then I turned my thoughts to consider wisdom and also madness and folly. What more can the king's successor do than what he has already been what has already been done? I saw that wisdom is better than folly, just as light is better than darkness. See, but he found out the more that he learned, the less that he knew. And what what did, what he did know showed him that everything is futile without God. And in the last chapter of Solomon's diary in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, in verse 13, this is what he said. He said, now all this has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. We're reading the story here from the wisest man who ever lived, a man that had more wealth than anyone you could ever imagine. And yet he comes to the point in his life where he says, Here's the real conclusion of the matter. It's really all about fearing God and keeping his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Solomon finally found the true source and the secret of satisfaction, and you know what it was? A relationship with God. You see, friend, money cannot buy you happiness. It's only after we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior that we have those streams of living water that flow from within us and give us a real satisfying life. I heard a story one time of a foreigner here in America who saw a water fountain for the first time in his life, but he could not see how to make it work. It had no tap, no buttons to press, and he became very angry and frustrated. He was about to turn away when somebody pointed out to him a sign at the bottom of the fountain that simply said, stop and drink. Well, when he stooped over, he discovered that an electric eye detecting his presence caused the water to automatically come flowing out of the fountain. You see, friend, when we come to Jesus, he provides the living water, a spiritual satisfaction, a contentment that we can't find anywhere else. 
Are you tired of living without a spiritual passion or zeal for God? Are you tired of just going through the motions? Friend, today, come to Jesus just as you are. Turn your life to him, and he will let you drink from that living water that brings satisfaction in your life. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Zechariah that one day a fountain will be opened in Jerusalem, a fountain of grace, and all Israel will be saved on that day as they look at their Messiah who comes to redeem them as the armies of the world march against Israel. Zechariah 14, verse 8, it says, And on that day, living waters will flow out of Jerusalem. That day on the Feast of Tabernacles, when Jesus spoke to the crowd, he shouted with a loud voice, Whoever comes to me, streams of living water will flow out of his belly. Jesus was talking here about the eternal life that's available to the person who turns to him as Savior. Wow. Everlasting life. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. I think there's nothing more beautiful than watching a person come to to salvation and come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. They go from a dry and parched land of trying to satisfy uh, their, their soul with the pleasures of this world to coming to know the salvation that is found, the gift of eternal life that is found through Jesus Christ. I love the very first verse in the book of Psalms. It says this in Psalm 1, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Now notice this is talking about the child of God. Look what it says in verse 3. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And and in whatever he does, he prospers. What a beautiful picture of the child of God. When we come to the Lord, we are like a, a, a tree planted by those streams of water. And we have that living water flowing out of us, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Our world today is desperate for some good news. And you and I have that good news found in the Lord Jesus Christ, friend. On that day in John chapter 7, when Jesus declared at the Feast of Tabernacles that he was the living water that would cause a person to never thirst again, as the priest would go from the temple down to the spring of Siloam and fill that golden pitcher with water while the choir sang, they would read Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 3. Let me share that with you. It says, therefore, begins with my favorite word, you will joyously draw water from the springs of salvation. And in that day, you will say, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. May they make them remember that his name is exalted. So he said, you will joyously on that day draw water from the springs of salvation. My friend, I hope you've experienced those springs of salvation in your life. If not, you need to call upon God today. Ask Jesus Christ to to come into your life, and, and he will change you, and he'll give you purpose for living. If your life feels like a dry and a weary land, like you're in a parched desert, my friend, call out to Jesus Christ He can change your life, and he can give you purpose for living. This past weekend, I had a guy come into my church, very inebriated. He lived in the neighborhood, and he just said, I need help. And I watched him as he called upon Jesus Christ to come into his life, and God touched him and sobered him up. Friend, we all need that spring of living water that is only found in the person of of the Lord Jesus Christ. Walk in grace, friend. Thanks for joining us today for Fresh Oil with Pastor Keith Manley. Fresh Oil is an outreach of Grace Family Church in Rockford, Illinois, and can be heard each weekday at this same time. You can reach us online at weneedgod.com. Until next time, remember, God's love for you is unconditional. 
He makes His mercies new every morning.